Hi there, Andrew Jackson, OJ Design Studio. Today, uh, another SolidWorks video. This time I'm investigating um, modelling the exterior surfaces of the Apple Magic Mouse. Um, I'm not going to bother modelling any details because um, that's pretty, um, pretty fairly straightforward. I just wanted to cover um the primary surfaces on the product now i've modeled this uh must have been uh well over a year ago in rhino um uh as an exercise personal learning um using uh overbuilt surfaces and then trimming back um trimming back surfaces to get the curves um to get instead of modeling modeling explicitly up to um boundaries so I thought I'd have an explore in SOLIDWORKS and see um, how it compares because in Rhino this is I predominantly used um, I'll show you a picture predominantly um, manipulated points manually uh, to to um, to sculpt the surface and then I trimmed back the surface uh, with some curves like so, whereas um, in SOLIDWORKS we don't have the uh, ability to, to manipulate CVs on the surfaces quite in the same way as uh, in Rhino or other programs, other noob software, so much more curve based. So as a starting point I imported my old, I'll just roll through the model and just uh, explain some stuff, I imported my old um, my Rhino model, which is all detailed up. Um, so this was a very lightweight model. Um, I'm not expecting to be able to get the same sort of um, curvature, especially in the underside here, because this each quarter, each quadrant is a um, is a single surface that's then trimmed. Um, so I expect that's going to be fairly hard to match in. Um, my SOLIDWORKS model, but I'll give it a go. One thing I have noticed since um, since attempting this in SOLIDWORKS is I've got this, uh, the, the product's a bit bulbous in this area, so um, I'm only going to loosely use this as a as a visual reference um, for the exploration. Okay, I'm going to zap through this quickly. So, started by building the key plate. So to build the key plate in this case, I've decided I'll just bring up the reference of the key plate. Um, created a center line, which is a degree three spline, which I've mentioned. Um, a section, midsection. And then I've created two planes um end plane here is normal to the normal to the curve and the end point our center line and the other plane is a width based on the end point of the section mid curve and then i've created um two more sections the end which is a degree two curve so we're going degree two in this direction, whoops, okay, so then I've just created a, a loft, I tried um, boundary surfaces and, and um, loft in two, di two different directions, if you know what I mean, like so I have these, uh, these profiles being the guide curves and vice versa, and this gave me the cleanest result, so you can see there from the curvature graph that's fairly clean, um, normal to profile on the sections that are on the mirror planes because the curvature once you mirror it over the curvature will be the same um, so you don't need to make it curvature continuous on the middle planes just tangent okay and then created a sketch which is the trim onto that sketch okay so that is a degree four spline, five CVs, 
and before I trim this surface I just extend the edges out a little bit because otherwise my trim is uh, coincident to the corner points of that surface before I extend it so if you trim it sometimes you get the trim will end like a fraction before because um, the curve actually the, can't, the computer can't resolve uh, you know the tangency okay and by extending it there's no issues now while it's extended I've just created some offset surfaces so I've got my key plate thickness at 2.1 millimeters and the key plate gap uh, one millimeter okay so I'll use those later and then I've got to trim the key plate surface back okay so now I'm just going to create the side surface on the key plate um, so I've created, a, I've just got a point here because I'm going to change the surface from being fairly ruled into um, one that sort of deviates around to end up being normal to the surface at the centre. So I've created a sweep right round which is controlled by the sketch. I've got three degrees of draft here. It looks like there's some draft on the, um, when you look dead on the front of the mouse. It looks like it tapers downwards. Um, so start with three degrees there. I'm going to trim this sweep back to this point I created. Uh, and then from that point forwards, it's going to deviate around to this um, section here, which is normal to the surface at the center. And I've created an intermediate section as well. Let's control this loft. So this loft be normal to the center, uh, tangent to the surface here. And knit those together. And then I've trimmed those back with this um, offset I created back here. Did a mutual trim with the key plate thickness surface. Okay, uh, so that's the key plate surface finished. Um, fairly straightforward and knit. So I managed to achieve that in a similar way to the Rhino model with the over, an, um, overbuilt surface and then trim back. But this surface is much simpler in its curvature than the underside. So now moving on to the underside. I've created a midsection sketch which is tangent to our side surface here, which is what, three degrees of vertical. And if you look, if we look in there, I've tried to make the center line here like a nice equal uh, sort of increasing deviation from the underside edge of the key plate. Okay, and now I've created a base surface width because what I'm going to do is after much experimenting I found this is the best way um, best result I tried um, making a big overbuilt surface but um, in SolidWorks I just you'd have to put too many cross curves on to get the curvature control because um, the, the, the underside surface is fairly flat and then it turns all of a sudden um, yeah so unfortunately I'm going to have to model up to a boundary. So my original idea of doing an overbuilt surface and trim back is not going to work. So what I've done here is I've got a base path. Um, so I've got that section there. I've got a center section, center line section, which is a degree four Bezier curve, style spline, um, angle here, and these two points, well, three points, are collinear. So it's pretty flat and then it turns. Okay, and now I'm going to trim back the surface to give myself one boundary here so I can create a four sided patch, four sided surface in here. So my trim surface, trim, sorry, trim curve. Um, 
so collinear, collinear, and then it turns. So that's a degree four spline again, five CVs. Okay, and as I did the trim on the key plate, because these this this trim curve is, is coincident to the corner points of the surface, I'm just going to extend the surface edges out a little bit before I trim it. So we end up with an uninterrupted single boundary. Okay, now I'm going to um, add some sections to get some additional control. Tell you what, bring up the um, this is the key plate gap, um, which I also trimmed with the side surface. Okay, there's one corner section. So the section is basically that's an intersection curve. You know, in, uh, tools, sketch tools, intersection curve. Um, and then that's a degree three spline, curvature continuous constraint to the intersection curve. And then I'm controlling this end um, with an angle. So I can tweak it easily. Okay, and another section down here. Um, same setup, so I won't go into it. It's just got an angle and then um, the first CV is a dimension. Okay, and I have created a 3D sketch um, of the edge of this trim trim surface just because as you can see there there's a there's a break. So uh, there's a break in the surface edge there, um, which doesn't really need to be there. Okay. Oh, and that 3D sketch has a uh, fitted spline. Sorry. Okay, and now after much experimenting, um, boundary surface just gave me wrinkles and what have you. Fairly uncontrollable. Um, found a loft much better. So I tried lofts in um, like I did on the on the key plate. I swapped around, had the profiles down here and the you know so it's changed the directions of the of the curve selections around and this seems to because um lofts are directional unlike boundary so with lofts if it doesn't work one way you get some wrinkles you try picking your second direction curves swapping them with the top always try that um yeah so i had best results with um with a loft so i've got four profiles Normal to profile on the um, center line and the front plane because we're going to be mirroring over once and over again, and then uh, tangent to the top surface. Don't need to. Don't need to. You don't have the the option of picking curvature continuous as a guide curve, but because all our input curves are curvature continuous to this top surface, solid works. Um, most of the time will make uh, curvature continuous well it appears to be using zebra um, curvature continuous connection between the surfaces so that's all good and then our 3d sketch is the other guide um, no mucking around with tangent links or anything okay so there's that surface so curvature wise yeah hard to tell with solid works might be a bit peaky here but It looks okay. Um, it comes off the uh, trimmed underside surface. And then knitted everything together and mirrored it over a couple of times. As you can see, it's knitted together and then thickened the bodies into solids. Um, yeah, so um, I had a look online. Um, there's a few other tutorials on how to model this, but they all use fill surfaces. Um, and I tried a fill surface like around here, but you end up with without being able to control um, sort of they go all bulgy and, and what have you. So not very nice way to do it. Um, this is a bit more involved, but it ends up, you know, you end up with a better result. Oh, one other thing. One little trick I've sort of been using a little bit recently. You can use the draft analysis in 
in um, SolidWorks is kind of like a, a light lines cheat isofoc um, sort of to, to analyze your surfaces like a fixed zebra stripe. Um, it's a shame you can't put, make a gradient and then get multiple stripes across your surface. Um, but you can see if you so I've picked the top plane, like normally you know you might have three degrees if I'm checking the draft there. Um, so you know the top edge, everything's drafted. Um, but if you start increasing the the draft angle, you can actually use it to uh, to analyse your surfaces and see if there's any wrinkles and and wobbles and what have you. So it is like an isophot. I hope I'm saying that right. My Kiwi accent. Um, so you can sort of see it's starting to pick up some wobbles and wobbles in there. Which are kind of hard to see with Zebra because there's a lot of distraction when you when you rotate the uh, view. So if I pick that and then oh, I've got to go back before the thickens so I can just double click the surface. Um, so maybe I go add half a millimeter to that point. See what's happening. It's helped a bit. Right. Yeah, so you can see you can manipulate um, surfaces, and the draft actually gives you quite a nice static um, analysis of um, of your surface. Yeah, I know it's a bit of a hack, but turn that off, and I'll solidify everything, and then turn zebra on. So it's not, I mean, it's not perfect. There's some wrinkles in, up here. Um, generally, really happy with it. And if I run a deviation analysis on the edges, okay, that's that's why there's some wrinkling there. That's 0.89, um, the tangent deviation on that edge. Whereas this one's pretty good, 0.01. Yeah, so there's something going on there. Um, I could probably iron it out, but yeah, I hope this was useful. Um, it was useful for me. I mean, there's no way on earth I'm going to be able to create um, as lightweight a, a model, or as clean a model as I could with Rhino in here. And in SolidWorks, you do have to use your curves to control everything, but... um. Yeah, I was actually surprised I managed to get this um, this result. It didn't take too long either. Just did this in an evening. Yeah. Anyway, hope that was useful. Um, I'm starting to rant. Have a good evening. Andrew Jackson, AJ Design Studio. Bye.